getting an inside look at how world championship caliber FTC teams design and program their robot can give you a serious edge. You're about to see some really smart solutions that can inspire your next build or give you ideas to dramatically improve your own team performance. In this video, I sat down with 18420 at the Into the Deep World Championships. They're gonna walk us through their robot, focusing on some particularly cool driver automations with some bright RGB indicators, a clever power takeoff system for their hang mechanism, and their simple yet robust claw design. If you wanna see what top tier teams are doing and pick up tips that can elevate your own game, you're in the right place. I'm Coach Pratt, and with over a decade as a robotics educator and coaching national champion FTC teams, including Inspire Award winners, I know a game-changing idea when I see one. Let's get into it. Here's a quick breakdown of the 2024 FTC Seasons game into the deep. The game is played on a 3x3 meter field with two alliances with two robots on each red and blue alliance, respectively. Robots had to go into the center structure to collect plastic rectangular prisms and place them in the respective baskets on the corners of the field for eight points. Or they could bring a sample to a human. This human adds a special clip to the plastic piece and then that allows the robot to hang this piece from the center bar for 10 points. In the last stages of the match, the end game, robots can hang from the bottom rung for 15 points, or grab the bottom bar, lift themselves up off the ground, and then grab the top bar and lift themselves up for 30 points. There are more complexities to the game, but that's a rough idea. Now, let's see how this robot managed those challenges. What's your purpose for having lights here? It's shining yeah. up. The main purpose is for our drivers. So uh, this will, yeah. this can rotate, but we yep. want it to be locked for scoring on the bar and scoring in the bin. So yep. these will go red when it's locked so that the drivers know, oh, uh, I can't rotate when I'm intaking. Also, so we're not just trying to mash the button and yep. it's broken. So it's not, you're not using them as a headlamp function. No. You're using them as, a, as a, indicator. a driver indicator. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I love having that. It makes it really easy for your drivers to know where things are going. Tell me a little bit more of that. You're, I'm seeing you've got an extra linkage in here. What is that doing for you? I wish Lex was here. Uh, oh, okay, wrong, he uh, wrong he guy did, to explain. He, he okay. designed it. Yep. I coded it. So you've the, clearly got yeah. a main gear here. That's, that's the gear for a I drive. Train. Yep, so that's your drivetrain. And then when... You know, it, yeah, it's a PTO system. Yep. So that way we can... In, so that way when because with this we have a yep. 1150 which gives a lot of speed yes. but not a lot of torque yes so when we uh, when we include the pto we can yep. connect it to our back motors yep to our back drive motors mm -hmm. to get more torque and more power uh, oh, yeah. and that's for when you go to engage your hands yes yeah. i got you okay so typically that's not engaged and there's this little servo here that's moving this oh sorry yeah, do you mind if i yeah. touch the robot yeah, 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 no, cool. no, okay so this is the one that's actually engaging You've got your main drive gear up here added, and then that attaches to this gear, which then goes down to that gear reduction. Which is yeah. connected to the bar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And because our friend is a genius, he somehow was able to do like the <laughs> actual like yep. gear ratio yes. to yeah. okay. make it easy. So you use your drive motors to be able to add yourself a little extra torque to lift yourself up the ground. Yep. Very clever. I love that. Super cool. And then tell me about your, your so I'm assuming you got a level three hang here. No. Kind of. No? You have the 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 building blocks for an attempted yeah. level yeah. three. We have okay. the capabilities, but it's yeah. what, super. Low. What's your? So you can do it, but it's just too slow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What's your it, theory behind it, your level two or your level three? Sorry. You grab the bar with these. You yep. pull them down. This. Yep. It'll catch the bar. This rubber band. Just a quick little compliant passive and then mechanism. We'll there. just yep. rotate the drivetrain. This yep. is slanted so that the bar can rise up. It. We'll just mm -hmm. come back up and then mm -hmm. rotate back. Mm -hmm. Cool. My problem is uh, we accidentally messed up, so there's too much weight back here. So it's a little... Uh, okay, yep, yep. What are you most proud of about your bot this year? Uh, how simple it is. Yeah, it works. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a darn good thing to be proud of, man. That's not the case every year. What's going on with your claw? We have... Three axes, to, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, so we have the arm, mm -hmm. we have mm -hmm. wrist, and then we have an axe yep. with a lot of rain. Yep. I really like 
your simplistic mount here. Yeah. It's super simple <laughs> to get one, to get another rotation motor, but it's literally just an angle bar. Yep. How do you find that's rigidity? Do you find it's pretty, pretty rigid throughout? Yeah. Well, it looks really solid when I'm looking at it right yeah, now. Well, yesterday we actually like rammed this yep. into this. the submersible. Uh huh. And we fried a servo here. Okay. But it stayed connected. So, okay. You think maybe it's because all that impact went right on that? It went joint. right on the yeah, servo. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. That's totally fair. So, when you ram it in, it got a little harder than you'd expect it to be. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's not fun to fry the, the axons because uh, they're not cheap. Well, we, we, fried a, we fried a 35 yeah. kg. But okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah all yeah. we had was axons. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Robert, this year we have one set of slides that we put. Mm. On the rota- on a single bar with rotation, mm-hmm. and it's coaxially mounted, so we can extend yep. and rotate on that bar. Mm-hmm. Do you guys use a spring or some sort of yeah, a, change for your track? Ah, there it is. We okay, have a return spring. Yeah, I was about to say I didn't see one on a, on a string point there. How do you find the reliability of your mounts? Have you found those being pretty good so far? Yeah, we used to have changing i think they would change direction so some yep. of them would be this way some of them would be this yes. way and yep. they were slipping off okay so yep. redesign them yep put them all the same way and it works yep. just fine for beautifully us. Or what is yes. this this is a yeah. encoder yep. on our yeah it looks like it's on it's your on the rotation yep. motor okay. to see where we are so it yep. kind of like a servo yep uh-huh 100 percent. do you need to run this all the way back or do you keep it at a straight 90 for we usually like to keep it like this because we like to go up to the bin like this, okay, so that makes it easier for you to know. Rest. Yeah. yeah, okay. And you've got a positive stop here. Yeah. That's why this is at that angle. Yes. It just okay. keep, yeah. yeah. Also reduces. Do you find that this naturally finds the correct angle as this thing slams into it? Uh, yeah. Yeah? I think we overshoot by like a degree or two just to make sure. Okay, yep. Yeah, yeah, because it looks like you got a, a bit of backlash in your system. So that's yeah. probably so why we, you have that overshoot. Backed up. Yeah, okay. Has that backlash been a problem for you at all this season? Not really. No. Cool. 